Welcome to a rhythmic new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. You ever enjoyed that feeling of gulping down a cool glass of water on a hot day? Isn't it even better after some rigorous activity like, oh, I don't know, dancing? What does this have to do with anything, you ask? Well, obviously it's because today, we're talking about Epsars. Epsars originate in Hindu mythology, and an important thing to know going in is rather than the name of a specific deity like Thor or Ares, Epsars refers to a broader type of water spirit associated with dancing. They're often the wives of Gandharvas, who are more masculine spirits who work for Indra, a god of the weather. I actually really like the relationship between an Epsaris and Gandharva, since the Epsaris dances to the music that the Gandharva plays. They're a super sweet married couple entertainment duo! Epsars hold many similarities to feminine spirits from other mythology, such as the nymphs from Greek mythology, the Valkyries from Norse lore, or even angels. Aside from their dancing skills, Epsars aid the souls of humans by leading them into the heavens. Epsars Compendium Entry from Persona 3 states that they are water spirits in Hindu mythology. They are beautiful young women who dance for the gods. They also guide heroes fallen in battle to paradise. These spirits have been featured in supporting roles from various Hindu texts, including the Rig Veda and the Mahabharata, the latter of which describes them in a fair amount of detail. These and others by thousands, possessed of eyes like lotus leaves, who were employed in enticing the hearts of persons practicing rigid austerities danced there. And possessing slim waists and fair large hips, they began to perform various evolutions, shaking their deep bosoms and casting their glances around, and exhibiting other attractive attitudes capable of sealing the hearts and resolutions and minds of the spectators. So yeah, apparently they're pretty darn fun to watch. I guess that's one way to cheer up after finding out that you're dead. Epsars has had a couple of designs throughout the franchise, but the three we're going to focus on today are from Devil Summoner Soul Hackers, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, and the Devil Children or Demi Kids games. In her Soul Hackers design, Epsars has yellow skin and some fairly exotic clothes, with its headdress and bracelets resembling the dancers of Cambodian ballet, which is sometimes referred to as the Epsara dance. The kanji on her dress, at least the top two that I can see, are the kanji for heaven as well as the kanji meaning to rise up. These both represent what the Epsara does pretty well. I also like the touch of having her hair act as a dancing ribbon that shapes out the symbol of eternity. Overall, this is a really nice design for Epsaris that I wouldn't mind seeing come back in a future Megaton game. The Devil Survivor series is known for using some older designs for demons, so maybe we could see this design again if we ever get Devil Survivor 3. Now before I reveal the Demi Kids design of Epsaris, I should warn you all that it's a little racy. Most of the designs in this series are much more cartoony, but in this iteration, she's... topless. Okay, you've all had ample bracing time, so let's dive in. As you can see, Epsaris from Devil Children maintains many of the dancer qualities the spirit is known for, with the notable difference being that she's a bird. Epsars have been shown to be capable of flight, especially in more eastern artistic depictions of the spirit, but why a bird? I think it's worth noting that since Epsars are elegant water spirits, what better bird to represent their design here than a swan? Like Epsars, swans are known for being graceful beings associated with the water, and it also stands as a reference to the classic ballet, Swan Lake. It's also possible to hint at the marriage between an Epsara and Gandharva due to the fact that swans mate for life. Finally, the most recognized design of Epsaris is the one seen here, originating like many new designs of classic demons in Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne for the PS2. In my eyes, this is the perfect design of the spirit. Everything about her posture to her model animations screams elegance and grace. I love the color palette that Kaneko used here, relying on a lot of blues and whites. Doesn't just looking at this demon scream aquatic to you? Her costume even seems to resemble a Tsukumizu, you know, those school swimsuits you usually see in Japan. Much of her jewelry is also water-based, as we see the shapes of water drops on her belt, choker, earrings, and even a droplet-shaped piece on her headdress where a bindi usually goes in Hindu mythology and culture. Everything here ties Epsaris together as a dancer, a water spirit, and her cultural background. Nice job, Kaneko! Now, on to game history. There isn't too much to talk about with Epsaris, since she's generally a low-level demon that doesn't have a lot going for her in terms of story. I mean, literally, her being a low-level demon is one of her trivia entries on the Megami Tensei wiki. But that doesn't mean there aren't a few interesting things to talk about. One of the most notable instances is in Persona 3, where Epsaris is one of the demons capable of performing a fusion spell. Not just any fusion spell, but one with Orpheus, the protagonist's initial persona. The spell they create is called Cadenza, which heals the entire party as well as gives them increased accuracy and evasion. Considering how early you get Epsaris in the game, and when Orpheus is still a useful persona to keep on hand, this is a really great early game spell, especially on those harder difficulties. It also makes perfect sense that Orpheus the Musician would team up with Epsaris the Dancer to create the Cadenza spell. 
This is usually a segment in a concert when the orchestra takes a break, allowing the soloist to improvise a little bit. Let Orpheus team up with the delightful muse, and it's no wonder they create this awesome ability together. Absaurus doesn't have any particular story bits in Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey, but remember when I said her costume resembled a swimsuit? Well, one of the items she drops is called the Nymph Swimsuit in the English version of the game. This item is an ingredient to create a couple pieces of equipment, the most notable of which being the Alert Ring, which prevents sleep. Hard to sleep when you're dancing. In Shin Megami Tensei 4, Absaurus tasks Flynn with the Tokyo Bay Mixer Challenge Quest. For this quest, she has you killing Vasky and collecting their hides so they can make a rope so everyone can get drunk off Soma. Since people always need to get drunk, this quest can actually be completed multiple times. This quest is a decent way to get some Soma, which fully heals the HP and MP of one ally. Now before I wrap up this episode, I have a little bit of a bonus section I want to discuss. In today's episode, you learned about Apsaras, which are a group of dancing water spirits in Hindu mythology. But I think it's worth mentioning there are a few more renowned Epsaurus that actually have names, and a few of them have made appearances in Megaten games. Since there's not enough info on these demons to give them full episodes, I'd like to talk about them here. Tilotama is an Epsara that was said to have been created by combining the finest ingredients of the best things in the world. Real Powerpuff Girl situation over here. She's only appeared in one game, and that was Majin Tensei 2 Spiral Nemesis. The other famed Epsara, perhaps the most famed Epsara, is Urvashi, who has appeared in Majin Tensei 2 Spiral Nemesis as the penultimate fairy class demon. Urvashi was said to be the most beautiful of all the Epsaras, and you can really see it in her virtually identical to Tilo Thomas sprite. Urvashi also appeared in the very first Persona game as a member of the Magician Arcana. This meant she actually worked best with Yuka Ayase, which I think is fairly fitting for an Epsara, honestly. Also, in the Americanized PS1 version of the first Persona, Urvashi was named... Ixel or Ixel? No idea what that's all about. So there you have it, Apsaris, the elegant dancer of the deep end. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's gonna do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.